everybody. This is Cookbooks with Virginia. So welcome to Cookbooks with Virginia. My name is Virginia Willis. I'm a chef and cookbook author in Atlanta, Georgia. And each and every Friday around 11, 11.30, today is at 11, um, I bring on a different cookbook author. And it's the best part of my week. I get to talk to great chefs and cookbook authors, new books, classic books, brand new books, out of the box books. And I tell you what, speaking of out of the box, this book this week i have uh, i have the guest modernist pizza written by modernist cuisine and y'all this is crazy so this is just like the little the guide it, it came in a box there's three volumes there's a kitchen manual it is like everything and more that you ever wanted to know about pizza and it is absolutely incredible. And I am thrilled to pieces to have Chef Francisco Magoya here today to talk about it. And um, he is just awe inspiring in his own right. And I can't wait to bring on. So let's bring him on and let's talk, let's talk pizza. Hey, good morning. How are you? Hey, good morning. Pizza for breakfast. There we go. You could absolutely have pizza for breakfast. I mean, it's it has, you know, bread, it has, you know, vegetables, it has cheese. I mean, these are things that you would have in another form for breakfast and how many people have cold pizza leftovers for breakfast too, right? I Hello. Mean, sometimes that happens it's like, a lot. So. Yeah, it's like the best breakfast in the world sometimes, especially mm -hmm. you know, if you had a late night the night before, right? Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so Chef, let's, um, let's start please by you talking a little bit about your history and how mm -hmm. you came to, to be the chef at Modernist Cuisine and like help create these amazing books. Uh, so, you know, starting from present to past, um, I've been the head chef here at Modernist Cuisine for almost a little over ex eight years, exactly. And this January 14th was my eight year anniversary here. Um, so I've been here for, thank you very much. I've been here for eight years. And then this time uh, we've written two books. So two books, like that's the average, an average of a book every four years. Um, the, the pizza book is the most recent one. In 2017, we published Marinus Bread. Um, and that's even bigger. That's five volumes of, of, of book. So, uh, but before that, I was at the Culinary Institute of America, mm -hmm. where I was a professor for uh, close to nine years. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was there, I was, you know, in, in I was a, a professor in baking and pastry department. Um, and uh, during that time, I also wrote books. I wrote three ah, books, uh, but there, you know, what I, the reason I wrote them was because there was, you know, a lot of books are not meant for students. They're not meant for professionals. They're meant to sell thousands of copies, um, which is fine. I'm not against that. But uh, if you're a student and you're looking for really technical stuff or stuff that's going to help you as a professional in your restaurant or your hotel, there isn't a ton of that available. So my books were really focused towards that. Uh, very specialized to uh, like that industry. So, um, and before that, uh, I was the executive pay chef at the French Laundry in California, um, right, right, and, right. and and Bouchon Bakery. So it was a it was a pretty uh, big job, if you will. It's it's basically, you know, learning how to work in the three Michelin star restaurant is it, it sets you up for however you're going to cook after that, right? I mean, there's no once you know that there's just you know, one way to do it and it's the best way possible. It's hard to do it any other way after that. Even if you're making a sandwich, I, I don't, I think that's yeah. the best way to explain it. It's like, if you're making yeah, a sure. sandwich, you're, you're mindful of how you're making that sandwich. And if you're, right. you know, uh, making dough, like whatever you're doing it, it's, you have, you have a bar. And if you go under that bar, you know, it, you, you automatically know that you're you're not doing it as well as you possibly could do it. So that applies to pretty much everything you do. Everything, right? No, that's amazing to consider. And I think that mm -hmm. that is what makes a difference, you know, with, well, I mean, three star, of course, is like the completely upper echelon. But just that difference, it's like you're not competing against someone else's sandwich. It's your own sandwich, right? Sure. You know, your own sandwich needs to be, you know, it's right. like that, that attention to detail and the quality of the ingredients and, and right. how that 
All right. Well, chef, I just got to say this. If you were the, you're, you're uh, at French Laundry in Bouchon and then uh, instructor at the CIA and then uh, the, the chef at Modernist Cuisine, I'm not too sure about your career directory, but I, it's like, I don't know. Is, are you about to be the chef for God or something? I mean, that would be, <laughs> that seems to be like the natural progression here. <laughs> the, the Holy Hopefully Holy I don't Holy. get to see him for a long time. Yeah. But. Yeah. I'm not wishing you, I'm not wishing you to be the at all. That wasn't at all, but I meant, I'm just sitting here thinking like, no, oh I my know. gosh, you're really getting chill bumps because um, you're, I mean, your your career, I, I'm, I'm fangirling pretty bad right now, so I'm sorry. Um, so let's talk about this. So modernist cuisine, let's talk a little bit about that for the folks that aren't aware that it, it, it is like the, it is like the, it's almost like this culinary think tank. Would you say this? Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. I mean, what we have here is a it's 25 people that work in the entirety of modernist cuisine. And that mm -hmm. is, you know, we're, it's not just kitchen. There's not like 25 people in the kitchen. Uh, there's okay. in the kitchen. It's, uh, you know, we have five chefs, including me. And I'm in charge also of the food science department, which is, department, which is two people, a food scientist and her assistant. Um, and so my job is to coordinate the work between the chefs and the food science department. Um, mm -hmm. And to write recipes and to you know basically organize the whole project um but we also have a photo team uh we wow. have a publishing team we we self-publish which is great it's great because you know the book is ready when we say it's ready not when the publisher you know is in a rush to publish the book right, right so right, 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 there, right. that's that is an enormous privilege to have um to be able to say you know okay that's it it's as good as it's ever going to be um let's go to print and so we, right. we self-publish and uh, we also have our own marketing and PR department here. So we don't right. outsource that. So that's the totality of the 25 people that work here at Modernist Cuisine. And that is, that is really a gift, right? Cause there are yeah. usually all of those players, knowing myself and all those players are outside and you're dealing with mm -hmm. different people. And, you know, there is a sort of general goal of objective to like publish right. a book, but you're really like, y'all are behind this. I mean, 10,000%. So, Okay, so let's talk about ready to publish. So we've got we've got the kitchen manual, which I think is like right. really amazing, and I love the fact that the pages are feel plasticized. Yeah, is that's that right? that's intentional. It's intentional yeah. because uh, what you have in that manual is all of the recipes from volume three um, are in there, like condensed. Oh, well, actually, recipes we have recipes in volume two and volume three, so they're all condensed in that manual so that right. you don't have to bring your beautiful book into the kitchen. And, you know, those pages are plasticized so that if you get tomato sauce or olive oil or right. flour or whatever, and it, it wipes off easily. Um, no, so so, that's I mean, I think that's a, it's a perfect example of like literally like the attention to detail. It's just about what you're talking about, making that Michelin three star sandwich, right? Like it's a cookbook right. that you effectively can wipe off with a with a towel all right let's see what we've got some comments so um oh, okay <laughs> uh, matthew deaton he's a great chef he's here watching he's a he's got some barbecue going on over here on the mm. east coast all right so we've got the we've got um the kitchen manual and then we mm -hmm. have we start out with these are some heft too you could like you yeah. know <laughs> we've got the um the history and the fundamentals uh -huh. you have um we have volume two Wow. Technique and ingredients, right? We got right. that. Mm -hmm. And then we have volume three, <laughs> mm -hmm. the recipes. This is just really, it's an incredible. And so modernist cuisine sort of focuses on, is it um, like translating? I mean, he said about the, uh, is it translating almost like chef recipes to home cooks or elevating home cooks or how does that work? Cause this is also accessible to people. I mean, it's clearly written yeah. in a language is not just for chefs like yourself. Right. I think the best way to put it is that we, you know, the translator part is, is very accurate, but we translate what would be like the science of let's say pizza in this case or bread or whatever where the subject right. matter is because the language of science can be very dense, very complex. Uh, even the smartest people, if they don't have a science background, it's very hard to distill what the information is. So our job, yeah, exactly. It's like, it's a completely different language. So mm -hmm. part of our job is to kind of translate that because there's a lot of information that exists in very dense texts, uh, like, right. you know, the, the protein content of flour and what, you know, what, what are the polysaccharides that are in the, the starch and how does the yeast break down? All of these things, we sort of translate that in a way that everybody can understand. We don't dumb it down. We just 
put it in a language that everybody's going to be able to understand. But right. I would say that our books are for everybody, right? I mean, I think right. that our books are for home cooks and we write a lot to home cooks because it's, it's the most limiting kitchen that exists. I mean, I think that yeah. if you think of the ovens that exist in a professional kitchen, whether it's a restaurant or hotel or a pizzeria, that equipment is meant to do very specialized stuff. It, and it's right. you know, also costlier and so on and so forth. Most home kitchens are very limited as far as the types of ovens they have, uh, space, and you know, just the quality of the equipment, right? If you have a, if you want to do pizza at home and you just have a, you know, a regular average home oven, there's a lot of limitation that comes with that. So what we try to do is help people make very good pizza with those limiting factors. But if you also have, you know, a $20,000, you know, wood fired oven, we also have our recipes running towards that. So, um, yeah. there's, there's, if you have a stand mixer or if you have like a large spiral mixer, how do you mix the dough? What, what are the steps and so on and so forth? So, um, we try to get our books to be useful for a, a large group of people. Well, it, it, it really, it really is amazing. So 1700 pages, three volumes, mm -hmm. recipe manual. It's more than a cookbook. It's science stories, culture, and history. And so that is, so you, we, are we all in agreement that pizza is probably the world's favorite food? I think so. And, you know, we actually did the, the, you know, our homework on this. Uh, there uh -huh. uh, appears to only be two countries where pizza is cannot be found. Uh, and I don't remember them off the top of my head because <laughs> it's, I had actually never heard of these countries before. Well, there uh, you go, it, man. There you yeah. go. Uh, it's, like Mold it is, it's like Moldovia or something, some fake Disney. Country, yeah, right? you know, one of them was like near the Arctic Circle, which means like the, also the population was probably like, you know, in the dozens, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's it, what it goes to say is that, you know, it's a food that adapts very easily to circumstance and environment, right? I mean, you have right. a source of heat, you can make dough, you probably have, you know, access to tomato sauce or some form of sauce. And you probably have access to cheese and so these are things that together are foods that a lot of people like it's very hard to not like pizza i mean i'm sure there's somebody who doesn't um, yeah. but the majority of people like that combination of baked dough sauce and cheese and then you know if there's extra on it there's extra on it but these three components together seem to be a favorite amongst the you know most of the world population so. no sure and i think it's um and another thing i remember reading in this is about how wherever pizza goes, it sort of adapts to the locale. You yes. know, so what we consider, I mean, I think that like sort of, I mean, I, I think this and, and not having read the 1700 pages fully <laughs> yet. I mean, I would have had, haven't read them yet. I, not, Come this on. Morning, not this morning, chef. I promise I'll catch up. <laughs> I was going to quiz you. I was going to quiz you. On <laughs> Old habits die hard. <laughs> um, so I was fortunate enough to go many years ago to Naples and to, mm -hmm. to shoot some TV in, in Naples. It's sort of like the, I guess mm -hmm. what, I don't know if the birthplace of pizza would be the right way, but it's sure, certainly an yes. epicenter of pizza. Yeah. I think it's the birthplace. We we think, uh, based on our research, that pizza does come from Naples, 100%. Wow. Um, and pizza, as you know it, and we know it around the world, is from people who emigrated not just from naples but from italy to other parts of the world right um a very interesting aspect as to why that happened uh why do people emigrate well they emigrate because conditions where they live aren't very good because of poverty right. uh but specifically in naples it was due to cholera there was a huge cholera outbreak in the end of the 1800s um and so there there was this huge effort to clean up the city uh, basically to put in sewage systems and actual running yeah. water because right. uh, that was that was a cause for cholera. But if you think that they, you know, gave these people temporary housing while they worked on sewage, it was like, no, you guys have to go. Um, and they had to sort out where they were going to go. And so people went to different parts of the world, mostly to America, um, New York specifically. Yep. Uh, but also there was a huge immigration towards uh, Buenos Aires, specifically in Argentina and Sao Paulo and Brazil. Um, so you're going to have huge Italian immigrant populations in those three areas. Of course, they went to other parts of the world. But, mm -hmm. you know, if we go to New York, there's a specific style of pizza, New York style pizza. Right, right. Um, if you go to Buenos Aires, it also is a very specific style, very different from New York style. And if you go to Sao Paulo, it also is a very specific style, very different from all the others. So 
it did adapt to you know what people could find there because not right. everybody that emigrated was a pizzaiolo not everybody was like making right. pizza but they knew hey we like pizza how do we make it here right so and not only that it, it i think um, to that. and when when uh people immigrate when people move they always mm -hmm. want to taste of home right right and, you know like, you miss that you right you miss it you know and there's nothing mm -hmm. that takes it home like the, the food that we, you know, the food that we came from. So, right. um, yeah, and I was checking it out because it seems that like there are 73 or around 70 pizzerias were open in 1861. And there's still a handful of those pizzerias is, that are open still in the in yeah. 2022. That's amazing. Yeah. It is because, I mean, that's generational, right? I mean, you have people that have uh, basically whether they wanted to, become pizza makers or not, they really didn't have a choice. Uh, so they, they were basically, you've inherited the pizzeria, now it's your time to you know carry the torch, if you will. So uh, right. there's about five pizzerias, I think, that are over 100 years old in Naples, and they've all stayed in the same family for that amount of time. So that's, those are roots, right? I mean, that's, that, that is a, a very intense like history to have for pizzerias. I mean, it, imagine a, a business that's been in the family for over 100 years with the same lineage. Right pretty remarkable right. right oh and then like take it one more step we're not talking like i don't know stocks and bonds and banking we're talking pizza we're talking bread and cheese like yes. the most simple one of the most simple food combinations in the world ever right mm -hmm. like it's it's like portable sustenance and the fact that this sure. is like multi-generational uh mm -hmm. family um owned business you know on what effectively you know is i don't know two dollars a slice or something like that you know that's that's like sort of mind boggling right. that it can last that long right all right you so have to make a lot of pizza to make a living that's a, sure. <laughs> that's a lot of pizza right that's a lot of pizza and a lot of uh, wood or coal or whatever mm -hmm. whatever that might be so um so when you were testing this book chef i have to ask you did you did you grow tired of eating pizza did that actually happen <laughs> Yeah, there there is such a thing as too much pizza. I didn't think that that would ever be the case, but uh, you know, the research that we had to do was uh, go to travel and learn from pizza makers around the world. Uh, in 2018, we went to Naples, and actually, not just Naples, but all of Italy three different times, um, and it was about two weeks, almost three weeks at a time, and every day it was going to five or six different pizzerias, and you have you know, five or six different pizzas at the pizzeria. Uh, and so, you know, the best pizzas are when you have in the morning, the first one, but yeah. as you know, you're reaching pizzeria number four, five and six, it's like your body really starts to get really angry at you because you've been yeah. eating pizza all day. And yeah. it's not like you have room to have a salad after that or fruit. It's just, you're right. just so full of dough and sauce and cheese. It's just, and then after 15 days of that, it, it, it can become a little too much. So, when the project was done, I did need a, a few months to learn to love pizza again because there was no. there was a point yeah. where it's like I just I cannot see like just the smell alone was yeah. um, it brought back like some memories yeah. of it's, having overeating too much pizza. A, there is such a thing as too much of a good thing, I guess. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. No, okay, so we've got the history and the fundamentals, and I just think that this is amazing, and that it's a, it's also so cool that you guys have the the photo team there, and you're able to do all the photography because the photography. I mean, we all know how important photos are in cookbooks, but this is like this is art. I mean, some of these photographs they would certainly be beautiful, framed and hanging in a kitchen. I mean, that's well, that's stunning. Yeah. And, you know, part of uh, like my boss, who is the, I guess, the 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 leader of Mars Cuisine, Nathan mm -hmm. Mervold, one of his uh, hobbies. I mean, it's 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 not fair to say it's a hobby because he's like really good at it. Uh, yeah. But he takes a lot of those pictures. We actually have three galleries where uh, we sell our photographs. We have a, a gallery in New Orleans. We have a gallery in La Jolla and we have a gallery in Vegas and one in Seattle. Uh, where people can buy the photographs. So it's yeah. it's something that we take really seriously because it's if you have a book and imagine that book, but just with information, I don't think it would have the same impact yeah. uh, or even just average pictures. I think that, you know, part of it is getting to have this like inspiration and awe from these beautiful pictures. So. It really, it is. but it, And it, um, I think that you're right. And it also just lets people know, let me see if I can show some of these close-ups. Like, the, I mean, 
that it's not only right. art it's beautiful but you're you're able to discuss the crumb and 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 like the the different weeks and what mm. that might do so i guess here in this page you're talking this is actually a no need artisan pizza dough that i just showed and then we've got um two others that are no need new york and no need uh neapolitan and just to or clarify for those who are listening it's need with a k <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's awesome. Okay, so I know that, that uh, this is a super intense, deep subject, but one of the things that when anyone's, you know, when they get past the, the beginning stages of making bread, so bread, you know, flour, yeast, water, like it, it's, mm -hmm. it's most simple, then you start talking about um, like hydration and things like that. So if someone right. is, is this the, like, would you suggest that this is the book for someone who's gone past those elementary books? Or if you're like a, a diehard enthusiast and you want to do a deep dive, is, is this is this the place to jump in the pool? I think there's various um, levels in our book. And we've basically, you know, there's a section where we break it down like, OK, I'm a beginner. What recipe should I make? So we have a guide for that. Right. I've never made pizza before. So there's a list of pizzas that we recommend for that. Uh, I have some experience. There's another list of recipes that we recommend for that. And then there's like the advanced pro recipes. Mm -hmm. um, and so then we have basically the recipes broken down for that, that sort of person. So if you're like a beginner and you've never made pizza before, there's recipes in here for you to execute. In fact, one of them is probably one of my favorite ones. I love thin crust pizza. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of my favorites. It's like cracker thin, but it also happens to be a very easy pizza to make. And it's one of the least time consuming ones. So, right. you know, I, I think what matters here is that first of all, the best pizza is a pizza that you like, right? I mean, and, right. and don't let anybody tell you, it's like, oh no, only eat authentic Neapolitan, whatever that means. Um, even in Naples, they can't agree on what is authentic. Right. So, you know, starting from that. Um, and so even a thin crust or Detroit, or if you love Chicago deep dish, that's yeah. Go there's with a it. recipe in there, you know? And, and yeah. that that's one of those things that I guess has a stigma. It's like, if you don't like a particular style, um, it's like you're some sort of paria in the in the world of, of pizza. No, but no, no. There's the all best that pizza is the pizza snobbery. the one you like. Yeah, so. no, that's true. There's all that food snobbery. And then there's the other thing, too. I know we've got someone. I'm going to have to go make one thawing out my sausage now. So that's it, too. I mean, I just, like, flipped open. I and mean, we've got a recipe for roast beef pizza with roasted king mm -hmm. trumpet mushrooms and a ribeye roast. So this is more, this is, like, all mm -hmm. you need for like every every right. recipe you ever need for pizza let me take a moment i've been so excited talking about you so y'all you can enter to win a copy of this i want you to go to my instagram feed and you can sign up to follow me and sign up to follow modern cuisine and it's all right there and you can enter to win and we're carrying this giveaway on um until valentine's day so you can maybe win a copy of modernist cuisine for your sweetie which i think is like I love what a great that. gift. Oh my God. It's not, I mean, pizza. it's not chocolate, it's pizza. I mean, if someone, right. you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so, um, all right. So we've got this like, over, like huge kitchen manual with all the different recipes. And so I started to just to briefly ask you about um, the, 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 the different dough. So you've got a super thin crust and then you have like how many dough recipes are in this book? So we have what are called master recipes. Uh, mm -hmm. And the master recipes are, based on the different like real actual styles of pizza that exist, because there's some styles right. that are, you know, like does a toppy make a style? Not necessarily. I mean, I think right. what makes a style is, for example, if you look at Detroit pizza, it's a thicker pizza. It's baked in a particular rectangular pan. It's baked right. with a crispy cheese border. Um, so that, that is an actual style. So that would be a master recipe. Neapolitan pizza is another, you know, master recipe. So mm -hmm. uh, we have a total of like about, I think about 1600 recipes, but it's not 1600 different pizzas, right? I mean, right, we right, have right, a, right. we have the, the basic dough recipes, but then sauce recipes, because you can go as simple as, for example, in Naples, they literally open a can of San Marzano tomatoes, pass it through a food mill, salt, that's the sauce, period. But then you can have like very long cooked tomato sauces, which are more in the South, like what would be on a New York style pizza. Right, um, right. And then, you know, there's there's sauces that are not tomato based. There's white right. sauces, there's pesto based sauces, there's like bechamel sauces. And yeah. then there's people who actually don't put sauce on the pizza. Um, so you don't have to put sauce on the pizza. So then uh, we also have recipes for toppings, even for making cheese, if you're going to make mozzarella from scratch, not meaning just from curds, because 
is making mozzarella from curds really <laughs> making cheese no you're you're stretching curds that's but we give you a, a recipe to go from zero um to make your own mozzarella to make your own ricotta even uh to make variations on mozzarella if you wanted to make like a paprika flavored mozzarella saffron right. flavored mozzarella uh, basil flavored mozzarella um you know we have all of those recipes with step-by-step -step photography on how to do it from beginning to end so. no it's really really incredible i haven't gotten to this yet but did you come across i know that like in a i think it's western pennsylvania they fry the dough before they bake it you ever heard of uh, that? I'm gonna... well there's a style in italy called montanara style which is basically uh -huh. it's a it's the dough that is first fried and you can fry it in a fryer you can fry it in a shallow pan we have a, a you know instructions for it and then once it's right. fried then you put sauce and cheese on it and you finish it in the oven um so i have to say i think that they do this i think that they do this a, a friend of mine sarah she's from uh -huh. she's from pennsylvania and they do that there and i kind of assumed frankly it was like a a, a bar food situation like a, somebody oh, needed pizza be. and there was a cook and someone was behind mm -hmm. and they threw the they threw the dough in the fryer to like expedite the order faster but now sure. you're telling me there's a history yeah possibly. i mean it goes back a, a couple of decades um and you know we've we've also wondered why fried pizza isn't more popular in the united states i mean we love fried foods in this country we, we fry food. butter we fry the most ridiculous things but pizza has fried pizza hasn't really taken off and uh I'm, it's it's pretty curious as to why that happened but i did want to show you something uh you know okay, we yeah, were talking yeah. earlier about how you know what it is uh you know how can people successfully make pizza at home yeah. biggest difference between a professional pizzeria if you will or like a pizzeria and a home maker uh pizza is that right. the oven right i mean the oven yeah. is the number one everything else you can mix the dough properly you can proof it all of those steps you can easily replicate yeah. at home the oven right. is the hardest part so oh my god this is one of the heaviest things we have here this is called a baking steel okay oh dang so, y'all make them heavy and big oh my god this is super like you could really work out with this i mean it's really it's really quite a workout yeah, i think I it's it. <laughs> but what this is it's something that you know some people bake right at home with like a baking stone uh, uh -huh. which is okay it's better than nothing i suppose but a baking steel this is a three-eighths of an inch thick piece of steel that wow. you put in your oven when you're preheating it uh, what's great about it is that it is being that it's a dense material, it's going to absorb the heat and it's going to stay hot for a long period of time because in the home oven, what happens? You open the door, uh, all the hot air just goes out, right? Wow. So then when you close the door up, it takes a while to recover. But if you put your pizza on this and it's, at, you know, let's say, 500 degrees Fahrenheit, this is going to mm -hmm. stay at 500 degrees Fahrenheit no matter how often you open and close the door. Um, okay. so what this is going to do is it's going to, you know, go right into the dough. It's going to bake it really fast and it's going to give you that pizzeria style pizza. Now wow. you won't be able to do Neapolitan style at home unless you have an oven that can go up to nine, 850, 900 degrees Fahrenheit. If you have one of those like uni boxes or the rock boxes yeah. are great. They're for outdoors though. Um, yeah. there's the pre, uh, the Breville pizzaiolo, uh, oven, which is very specialized. It's just for making that. But if you just have a regular oven, this is the best thing that you can get. It's called a baking steel. Uh, it's the best. I don't know how much it is. I think it's between, I think it's $90 or something like that, but it's one of the best investments you're going to make to make pizza at home because it's not just for pizza. I, I leave mine in my oven at home. Yeah. Um, because if I'm roasting vegetables and I put it on this, they roast faster. If I'm roasting fish or whatever, I put the sheet pan directly on this and it's just like the direct heat is going right into the food. So it, it, it's, oh, it's multi-purpose, not just for pizza. But it gives you a great crust for your pizza. So, oh man, that's awesome! Y'all really do think of everything. I love it. I mean, it, the attention. I highly recommend it. it. Just like the zeroing in on it, Chef. Mm. It's so fantastic having you as a guest today. Um, it's been an honor to talk to you, and I, I appreciate. I know that you're uh, on the West Coast, and I'm on the East Coast. So I appreciate you getting on in there. But I, I was told, and I'm not surprised that you were you were often in the kitchen early. So I'm very grateful for your time. My day starts at five thirty, so no worries this is actually a few hours in so <laughs> all right well cool well thank you so much for joining me today and and we'll share all the information that said that people can find out more about modernist pizza and it's a pleasure to talk to you thank you thank you for having me it was awesome. a pleasure to talk awesome. to you thank you thank you bye-bye oh my god y'all isn't that crazy okay so go to 
um, go to my Instagram page and you're going to find out more about it, but you're going to follow me and follow Mod Cuisine and it's all, all the instructions are there. And we're going to leave this giveaway up until Valentine's Day. So you have an opportunity to win this incredible deep dive on pizza. So thanks so much for watching Cupcakes with Virginia. Y'all have a great day. Have a good weekend and I'll see you later. All right. Bye-bye now.